Thanks for tuning in today to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. One of our topics today is going to be wheat fertility. When you think about getting the highest yielding wheat crop, this year it's really critical. If you don't get big yields, the price per bushel is not enough to help you make it. So in order to do that, we'll talk about the fertility needs that you have and what kind of return on investment you could expect. The odds are pretty high this year. You're going to be using a pre-emerge herbicide, maybe in many different crops. Well, how do you get the most out of your pre? We're gonna talk about that today. We'll also show you how to stop our weed of the week, but first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about grass waterways. Why are they here? What's their purpose? One of the things I think is beautiful as you drive through farm country is as you go through some rolling hills and you see in the valleys, there's a grass waterway. That green grass just stands out all throughout the season. And so you may say, well, are grass waterways just there for their beauty? No, they're absolutely there for utility. When you think about those hills and those valleys, all the water when you get a big heavy rain is going to wash off those hills and right down the valley. Having a perennial grass in that waterway holds the soil in place and it allows for the water to move down without having soil erosion problems. Well, when we say not having soil erosion problems, that's not to say there isn't still going to be some erosion. One of the problems we have in our own operation is with water starting to flow around grass waterways. Or in one other case, we've got it where there's actually been a channel cut in the grass waterway and now all the water goes in a very small area and it rips some soil out there too. It's constant maintenance for farmers who are in hills, but these grass waterways absolutely can serve a purpose. In addition to having tile in the ground. So a lot of people say, well, I don't need grass waterways anymore. I have tile in the ground. That reduces the amount of water running across the field. And they're right in that respect that it does reduce the amount of water. But what the grass waterway is really there for is for a big rain. What tile is really there for is to lower the water table. So it's two different purposes. You know, the other thing with the grass waterways is they do act somewhat like tile in that they filter the water as it goes. So if there is something that washes off the field, for example, we're sanding in a field with corn stalks and if we got a huge heavy rain, maybe some of the corn stalks and leaves from last crop would roll down the side of the hill with the water. That's going to get filtered out in that grass waterway. Soil that washes off the side of the hill is going to get filtered out in that grass waterway. So the waterway does serve a number of purposes to help the farmer and to help the land. Well, another thing that can help your land is controlling weeds. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? When you need one machine that can do it all, you send in a Spartan. Your all-in-one forage solution from Capello USA. This direct cutting system is the right machine for almost any forage crop and gets everything done in a single pass. Keeps your cost down. Always versatile. The Spartan can be configured to fit any self-propelled forage harvester in the world. So, no matter what you forage, send in a Spartan from Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today.
Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. Growing wheat profitably is certainly going to be a challenge in 2017, and to do so, you've got to raise lots of bushels. Now, if you're going to raise lots of bushels, it's going to take some fertility, so we're going to talk today about what you actually need for wheat fertility so you can put on what is going to make you money and not put on the things that aren't. Well, the very first thing when we talk about a wheat fertility program that you should look at is the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal App. This is International Plant Nutrition Institute data, and you can plug in your yield goal. So for example, let's say you had spring wheat, 100 bushel spring wheat, you're gonna find, hey, there's the grain removal, the stover removal, and the total. So just grain removal only, that's what's gonna leave the field if all you take off is the grain. It's 57 pounds of phosphate and 33 pounds of K2O potassium. So it's not really that much in comparison to corn or soybeans. But it's not only that that you need to raise the crop, it's also the stover removal as well. So you gotta look at the grain plus the stover for the total. You've gotta make sure you have that much in the soil. All right, Brian, the big question that I get from wheat farmers across the country is, hey, I have to put the nitrogen on. I know I need to put nitrogen on, but here I am. I'm in a continuous wheat situation. I've got all this high carbon residue that's tying up my nitrogen fertilizer. What can I do to make my nitrogen applications more efficient so I can get by with a little less? Well, before we even talk about the nitrogen thing, and this is, this is and the reason why we're doing this is, this is exactly the question that comes up. But we gotta step back and we gotta look at removal. Okay, we did that. The next thing we have to look at is the soil test. Well, when you start talking about nitrogen, it's not just the nitrogen that's in the ground and the nitrogen you need, it's how much nitrogen is gonna come available during the growing season. If you look at organic matter, for example, you can figure roughly 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen is gonna come out of that organic matter for each 1%. So if you had 5% organic matter, it's very possible that you're gonna have 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen come available during the growing season. At some point during the growing season. Now you're talking about the whole growing season. And if we've got wheat that we're gonna harvest halfway through the growing season, it's hard to put a number on exactly what's going to be available yep, that, in that time yes, period. Yes, and that's an excellent point. So, you know, that's one of the big things that trips a lot of wheat farmers up is they look at it the same way a corn and soybean farmer does. Well, with corn and soybeans, they mature way later in the year, and soybeans especially need nitrogen way later in the year. Wheat needs it relatively early on. So when you look at the overall program on fertility, nevertheless, we can start talking about nitrogen specifically, but I still want to come back to, you've got to look at your soil test. What do you have already for P and K in the ground? Before that, what do you have just for base saturation? Before that, you've got to look at soil pH. And you step through all these different things and you say, okay, soil fertility for my wheat crop isn't just N, P, and K. It's a bunch of other stuff, including micronutrients, soil pH, and many more. All right, so you need all these nutrients, but the timing and method of application will make a big deal on how you're going to get these nutrients into the crop and how you can try to save some money too. With nitrogen, if you're blowing it out over the top, there is certainly going to be some loss and there is certainly going to be some waste because it's going to get tied up in residue that you've got on top of the soil. So a better way to do that is to inject it. So if you inject part of that nitrogen beneath the soil, safely below where all the residue's at, your root system can still access it and you don't have all the tie up. So that could help you with efficiency just a little bit. I talked to some farmers that are applying two and a half or three pounds of nitrogen for every one bushel yield goal. And that's a lot of nitrogen to be putting out there. Now, granted, some of that nitrogen that gets tied up in residue will release later. But this year, I don't know if you can afford to wait for that. Also, when you talk about nitrogen, putting it all at once is an inefficient way to do it too. Now, it's efficient in terms of you only have to make one trip across the field, but it's inefficient in terms of loss and just utilization by that plant. A lot of times that over application of N early leads to more tillering early and doesn't necessarily lead to more yield. But here again, it depends on what area of the country you're in. If you're in an area that has almost no rainfall, you can't count on in-season applications of nitrogen to get down in the soil. 
Whereas if you're in an area that has lots of rainfall, well, sure, then you want to go out stream barring your nitrogen two or maybe even three different times during the growing season. So the whole point here is you want to take a look at your soil tests. You want to look at what the crop needs and you've got to really look at everything the crop needs, not just N, not just P or K, but sulfur, micronutrients, the soil pH, look at your base saturation, how much nitrogen can your soil even hold, look at your cation exchange capacity. You do all these things and put together a more complete package and you'll find that your nitrogen use can be much more efficient and you should end up with higher yields and better profits. The other thing you want to watch for is weeds that could be taking away your fertilizer from your crop. Can you identify this week's wheat? We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at MortonBuildings.com. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in walks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence. And only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. When it comes to pre-emerge herbicides in corn, there are a lot of different ways you can apply them, a lot of different timings. But we just want to kind of talk through this a little bit because here's the whole thing. You're going to invest money in a corn pre. We want to make sure you get the most out of your investment. All right. First of all, application timing is just really critical. So let's talk through some of the most common timings that can be done. Let's start with pre-plant incorporated. So we're putting it out there ahead of planting and we're gonna till the soil to do it. Now there are a couple of uh, moving parts here. When you think about the products that you're going to use, do they have to be tilled in immediately? Like the old eradicane that we used to use back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, that had to get incorporated right away. So we'd have to put a spray nozzle on the front of our tillage tool to be able to accomplish that. Then the question is, which tillage tool can you use to get the most out of your pre-herbicide? Usually the tillage tool of choice is the field cultivator. But the big thing here is we want you to go fast. With most of these products, let's take Dual, Triple Flex, Outlook, Harness, Surpass, Balance Flex, any of these things, they're shoot inhibitors. In other words, if that weed is germinating in the top inch, the shoot of the weed is definitely in the top inch of soil, so you want to keep it relatively shallow. But it will absolutely take less rain to get the product working if you have that product tilled in. 
So what you want to do is go very fast. I often tell people run seven to eight miles an hour with the field cultivator and they'll go, whoa, I can't even cover the tire tracks with that. And then I usually respond by saying, oh, so you're telling me you don't have extensions on the shanks behind where your wheels run. Well, that's the first thing you need to do. So basically you're setting the shanks a little deeper, a little lower, right where your wheels are. That way you don't have to run the whole implement deeper. So the idea is you wanna keep the tillage down to roughly a couple inches deep, which means the herbicide would be about an inch deep. Now let's say you have some deep tillage to do. You have some compaction out there. You have some ruts, you have some stalks you have to bury. Do that first. If you're going to be applying one of these pre-herbicides for corn, you have to get the deep tillage out of the way and you have to make sure if you're coming back with the second pass that you don't have any big ruts. You don't want any big spots where that herbicide is going to drop down a few inches deep. Otherwise you're going to end up with streaks out in the field and poor control from your herbicide. One of the things that some people will do is they'll put the spray nozzles in the middle of the field cultivator in that case. So they've already started to level the ground, then they spray the herbicide, then uh, they've got the rest of the field cultivator and maybe a harrow behind or something like that. But even if you run a drag across the field, just anything to get that herbicide in the ground, even just a little bit, that means it takes a little less moisture. So I'll often tell people, you know, you'll hear some of these reps say, oh, it only takes a half an inch to, of rain to activate our product. And then the next guy goes, well, it only takes a quarter inch of rain to activate ours. Look, all these things are gonna be activated with almost no rain. But I don't just want activation, I want 100% control. Well, you're not gonna get 100% control with a half an inch of rain, no way. You gotta probably have an inch or two of rain or you have to till that herbicide in and then it just takes a little bit of soil moisture or a little bit of rain because the herbicide is already in the right spot. Now you just have to get it into the weed. All right, so if we're gonna go just pre-emerge and we're not gonna do any incorporation, you've got that choice of, do I wanna do it really early so we have more time to catch a rain? This is something we'd advise if we're in drier climates. Uh, get that herbicide out early. Now you got a couple of weeks or more to hopefully catch the moisture to move it into the soil. Or if you're in an area that's blessed with rain, hey, I get an inch of rain every week. Oh, okay, well go ahead and plant then and you can spray after you plant and let the rain work it down in. Now, one of the considerations you may have is how much soil am I moving with the planter? Because if you put the herbicide out before planting, you don't want to clean that whole row out and all of a sudden you've got a strip right in the row that has no herbicide because you push it all to the side. One of the other things that you have to keep in mind here is there are different things you can use as the carrier. You don't just have to use water. You could also use fertilizer. This is something we commonly do in our operation. We might go half and half maybe it's half fertilizer and half water, something like that. If you do go half and half, you generally have that chemical mixing in there a little bit easier. So it all depends on what you want to do, but all I can tell you is it's a pretty good way to go if you're putting, let's say, liquid nitrogen, uh, like 32%, or maybe even ammonium thiosulfate as the carrier out there. So now you're fertilizing and you're controlling weeds at the same time. Now when you're doing that, if you're putting fertilizer out, you're going to be using higher volumes. And higher volumes are fine for getting good coverage with that pre. When we're using liquid pre's and we're spraying them out in the field, we can get pretty good coverage. And it doesn't take a huge amount of gallons or the tiniest of droplets. Just watch what's happening behind your sprayer. Make sure you're getting adequate coverage to get good control. This is one of the huge advantages versus impregnating these pre's on dry fertilizers. We're not big on that practice because think about how many pellets are gonna be out in your field. Well, here's a pellet and a few inches over, here's another pellet. Well, you can't have a drop of herbicide here and then no other drop for a few inches. You're gonna have problems with weeds popping up in between. There are a lot of great pre-emerge herbicides out there, but there is one product we do not want you to use pre ever, and that's atrazine. Now don't get us wrong, atrazine is a nice product. It does a great job helping to control a bunch of weeds, but the problem with atrazine is it can leach. And the trouble with pre-emerge applications is that's where a lot of the atrazine that ends up in groundwater, well that's where it comes from, is a pre. So save your atrazine, use it post-emerge, or don't use it at all. Well, the other thing with atrazine is if you do put it out there, it really limits what your crop options are. So let's just say, for example, your corn gets hailed out, or all of a sudden you had that herbicide out and you just can't get back in the field. You got too much rain. Uh, now you want to switch to soybeans and you just put atrazine out and you can't. So it's a good thing to save that atrazine for a later application. Well, once again, we want you to get the most out of your pre-emerge herbicide investment. Pre's are incredibly important. 
if you're in a drier area of the country, it will help you to very lightly incorporate these pre's. You'll get better performance that way. Otherwise, you could spray the pre really early. In a wetter area of the country, certainly you could spray after planting if you want to. It's just you've got to have rain. These are not products that are going to have a lot of pullback on great big weeds that emerge. You have to get the weed before it gets out of the ground. That's where you get the best performance. Well, Pre-emerge herbicides may be important for our Weed of the Week as well. We'll show you which ones will work the best coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is a summer annual weed. It's Texas Panicum. Well, it's often misidentified for broadleaf signal grass or crabgrass, but there are a couple things you can look for to help you out. First of all, Texas Panicum has wide leaves that have hairs on both sides of the leaf. Well, right away, that rules out broadleaf signal grass. Then you say, well, wait a minute, that's just like crabgrass. Okay, now you gotta peel that leaf back a little bit. Look at the ligule. That's right where the leaf hooks up to the stem. And on crabgrass, you're gonna have a membranous ligule. And on Texas Panicum, that membranous ligule will have a fringe of hairs across the top. When it comes to control, this is not the easiest weed to stop. With corn, for example, we often talk about how great Harness Surpass, Outlook, and Dual are on grasses. Well, they're not on Texas Panicum. You'd have to go back to the old Eradicane or Balance Flex if you want at least some control out there. Your best methods, sure, still use your grass pre, but then come in post-emerge with something like Roundup, Liberty, or, or even Accent if the weed is real small. In soybeans, it's pretty easy to stop. You can use one of the yellows, Trefland, Sonalent, or Prowl, follow post-emerge with almost any grass killer, and then when we talk about wheat, you got to go prepare pre-emerge and then follow post-emerge with something like Axial. Our weed of the week is Texas Panicum. It's a tough weed to get under control if you don't get after it with your pre-emerge herbicide program. Hopefully we've given you some good ideas to get it under control on your farm. Well that's it for our weed of the week. Stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Sometimes getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older, conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head-to-head -head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, 
more you know. Side dressing nitrogen? Applying nitrogen over the row boosts nitrogen uptake and efficiency. 360 Y Drop places nitrogen at the base of the plant, not like Coulter systems that put it down the center of the row. With Y Drop, a small amount of moisture moves nitrogen into the root zone for rapid uptake. Getting more bushels out of your nitrogen investment is important. 360 Y Drop lets you apply nitrogen later in the season so you know exactly how much N is needed to finish the crop strong. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. In today's Iron Talk, we're going to discuss what the numbers mean and the size of tires. What's the difference between a 710 7538 and a 650 8538? Those big numbers are very important when you're trying to figure out what kind of load your tractor can carry and what kind of impact they'll have on compaction and traction within your field. So let's discuss the numbers to start with. First of all, let's say you're looking at a tire with a 420 85 R38. The 420 stands for the millimeters of width of that tire divide that number by 25.4 to get the number of inches that tire is wide. In this case, 420 millimeters is about 16 and a half inches. The second number, 85, is the aspect ratio. In other words, this represents the sidewall of the tire. 85 means the sidewall is equal to 85% of the width of the tire. The R stands for a radial tire. If instead of R you have a B or a dash, that would indicate that you have a bias ply tire. And finally, that last number, the 38, indicates the rim diameter of the tire in inches. There are some other things in the tire to point out as well. For example, this tire says tubeless. That means it's designed to run without a tube, just like the tire on your car, because the tube is actually built into the inner liner of the tire. A very important thing to understand is the standard load index rating of your tire. Now, if you look at this one, it says 144A8 and 141B. The 144A8 means it's designed to carry a load signified by that 144, which translates in this case to a specific number of pounds, 6,150 pounds per tire. The A8 means you could carry that load at 25 miles per hour. The 141B means you could only carry a weight of 5,680 pounds per tire if you ran at 30 miles an hour. Now, there's a lot of information on the side of your tires. Take some time this spring to look at it and understand the information on them. It'll help you pick the right tires for your operation. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's it for today's show, but if you ever have any questions for Darren and me, we invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show, where we take your live questions each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. But don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.